Welcome to the NMAA podcast, the best basketball league in Orlando and the longest running Muslim sports league in America. Based out of sunny Orlando in Florida, featuring weekly game previews, player stats, heated rivalries and guest stars. Now, your hosts, Waris Sahir, the Komish Omer Zahid, the Don Dev Lachman. Take it away, fellas. What's going on, NMAA family? Listen, the podcast is here. I know we're late, but better late than never, I've always said. And I'm joined by the two brothers, so hopefully they don't gang up on me. Usually they're fighting each other, though. Uh, Dev, the Don, Dev, hopefully you're reoccurring on this season. I know semi-pro, you were like, Sid's got it. I'm going to just <laughs> sit down and chill. Uh, how you doing, Dev? Good. Eid Mubarak to everyone, and that's kind of why we're late, fellas. Um, you know, long month of fasting, long month of everything, but this is probably the first season where I'm like, man, like, we usually draft, and then right away we get into the game. Yeah. So it's like, you felt this, like, build up an anxiety of, like, not having the games coming right there. Yeah, exactly. Sid, how you doing? Sid, Coach the Sultans, obviously you've been on here a bunch, but yeah. guest on in this week. Sid, how you feeling? I'm feeling good, you know, uh, loving my team. I think, as you know, Dev mentioned, uh, it's been Eid for us, which has been great time to relax, but also just anxious for the league to already start. Yeah. Listen, I know uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into too many details, but I just sometimes just get bored and throw t- trade offers and see, like, I'm like, let's see how this guy's feeling today, you know? And me and Sid had a trade <laughs> offer that we were just <laughs> talking to each other for a long time. And it's just nothing ever even happened, really. But the players um, knew about the behind the scenes that happens, even just the build up of the draft, the amount of trading of the picks, the amount of trading of this, the amount of like back and forth, you know, little bit of animosity towards another coach that doesn't oh want to trade. God. It would honestly, if we did a full documentary, I know we got the documentary this season, but if we really did a behind the scenes with the coaches and what type of little collusion deals we got with each coach saying like, "Hey, man, listen." Let this guy slide. I'll let me put it to you this, re- this way. <laughs> Roderick, I think he went to Ole Miss. That's a you know heavily recruited D1 school. I don't think his coach would have put in as much work as I did to get him to be on my <laughs> squad at the Sultan. <laughs> I might have given him NIL money to make sure that he was- <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we don't do that. And, anyway. and, <laughs> and, and, everybody and pays their own way. But I've never once traded my pick in the first round, ever, ever. So, you know, there's a little bit of behind the scenes that goes on to why I even traded that to begin with. Yeah. But yeah. that's neither here nor there anymore, but just a tidbit of things that go Maybe down. Maybe someday. Maybe we'll have a behind the scenes podcast where we go through stories. But <laughs> later in life. <laughs> <laughs> later in life. Yeah. For now, we got some of the team recaps. We got the top 10 recap with Dev. And Dev's got, a, Dev's got a little takes for each player. I, even I haven't even heard these. So I'm excited to see what he's got. And obviously the ever popular picks segment where we pick the games. And week one, nobody really knows anything. We act like we do. And I feel like I'm pretty accurate usually on, on my draft grades. But we really don't know. So that's going to be fun. This but, season, though, I would love it if we can post to see what the actual players think. Because I'll be honest, before, when I look at the teams and because of the new additions that are brought in, it makes me really think like, I don't really know exactly who's going to win until I see some of these players play. No, I want to see how there's certain teams that I, in my opinion, they might not mesh, but if they do, it's going to be scary. So we'll get to that. But first, the top 10 with Dev, let's get right into it. To the NMAA podcast. Welcome to a brand new episode. So we are here, the top 10 recap. Obviously, if you have any time invested into NMAA, you watched or saw some highlights of the uh, draft live, which we did on YouTube. Which, if you didn't check it out, go check it out. It was pretty cool. Uh, I'm biased because I hosted it, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, for now, we're going to do the top 10 
Number one, obviously, John Dev, you traded into that spot. And you picked Romello Bates, the last season's finals MVP. Regular season was a little rocky for them, but he carried them. I would say he did a lot of the work in carrying them, especially with the 30-footer that he hit. Yeah. Uh, but tell me, tell me what you're thinking That's about Romello this season. season. Yeah. I, uh, so Romello Bates, uh, first overall pick in the draft. He's not a stranger to that. He's done that before. Um, but this is a very deep draft that he's still got number one pick. Um, and I think that a lot has to do with the fact that we know the product that we're putting out there. But nonetheless, Romello, congratulations. He's going to be a dad. And I figured if I'm going to get one of the best players in the league, I might as well get him before he turns a little soft. <laughs> right? So dad mode means you're going to be a little soft, and it's coming, right? It's just coming. It's just what happens. So you're I'm telling on the court. me it's not avoidable? Listen, I don't have any kids. No, yet, right? I swear you, to God. Like, I'm on the court myself, and I'm like, I don't want to hit this guy because he's probably someone's son. Or he's yeah. probably someone's, you know, like, I like I just don't want to hit this guy anymore. I don't want the contact. And I'm not saying that Romelo's going to become that player, but 100%. I told BJ, when I called BJ over my collusion, I said, listen to me. If someone <laughs> called you, you tell them that you've been sitting at home having babies. <laughs> right? And <laughs> he started laughing. And, you know, unfortunately, I still didn't get BJ, unfortunately. But, hey, clearly that didn't work. But yeah. nonetheless... Romelo Bates, in my opinion, for the number one pick, this is his GOAT season for NMAA. If you put him alongside, and let's say, for example, we're saying that LeBron James is considered in the GOAT category. Romelo's been to tons of finals. Romelo's pretty much, at this point, you say, he gonna get you there. He, you know, for the most part, outside of, you know, unfortunately, Sultan's season, which I didn't exactly know what happened there because they had a bomb squad as well. We won't bring that up. I know what but, happened. <laughs> but, See, the thing is, he only wins when he's fourth seed, so you better hope you're fourth seed. Yeah, he was right? fourth seed all the time. <laughs> so, when he had that, listen, uh, no, li I, this is true. Because, no, I mean, Sid can speak on this because Sid, the Sultans, had Romelo. They were the one seed. I, MIB, when we had Romelo, we were the one seed. Both times we didn't end up winning the championship, but the the two times where he wasn't, uh, where he was on a team that weren't the favorites to win it, that's when they won it. And so, this is not a knock on his rosters. And I quickly want to put a disclaimer that anything I say, I'm not targeting someone's personal life. I'm not targeting anything about them as a human being. I'm literally strictly talking about basketball. So if you have something that I you think I said wrong, which everybody thinks I have something that I said wrong. Come to me, tell me. I won't change my opinion, but <laughs> I'll at least express to you why I'm saying it. Um, but 100%, you guys can ask me what you think on this one. But I think if, in my opinion, if he wins it with this stack of a season, you might as well give him a GOAT t-shirt. He's in that category. You know what? I I'll do you one better. If he does win it, I will be the one to buy him that GOAT t-shirt. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and I, I just can't like, I, and, and now here, if the next set of guys that I call out, let him and allow him to get that goat season, you guys should applaud him for it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, obviously there's a bunch of them in the top 10, but number two, Josh Fillmore goes to the legends that what you got for Josh? Josh. Is it AKA Philly? Yeah. Hello. Josh. Josh. Philly represents Allen Iverson. You have a title for us, but I'm going to put an asterisk, Josh, on this title right now, and you're not going to like what I'm about to say to you right now. Michael Scorsum won finals MVP. Josh Fillmore, in my opinion, dog mode has to come out. Don't take the back seat because you were drafted number two overall. I think Josh has every skill set possible to win a title. But in my opinion, you let your emotions get to you sometimes. And, and it's not because like a part of me just feels like Josh is like, I'm so good. I can work at the same time. I can have a conversation with some players and I'll knock down a three at the same time. So what happens if he decides to not have a full-time job while playing basketball? And at the same time, start saying, I'm just going to cook everybody who tries to check me. Then I think it's checkmate 
for Josh Fillmore. I think he gets to put up the numbers that he puts up. And Josh, mm. you get the gripe on you a sniper and you're a shooter, but can you play defense? I think you can play defense. But guys say that sometimes you check out on that defense. Don't blame me. I'm not putting quotes on me saying that. <laughs> All right. I'm just strictly saying from the what I hear, and I hear a lot uh, you know, across the players is, Josh ain't checking me. So it doesn't matter. He's still got to come and play defense. So let's see if he can be that two-way player that we know he'd be. Romello even has the name Bates Island for a reason. Yep, that's true. That's true. And number three, Terrazzo's returning after a long time. Uh, Musa Abdul Alim. That well, we can easily Musa. say why he's returning, though. He's a pro's pro. A pro's pro. The man has a three-tier game. I hugged Musa the other day. I was like, man, you're like a piece of steel. Like, <laughs> God, like, man, like, he's he's just, like, why are you so strong for an individual? <laughs> um, but you guys can back me on this. Growing up, right, isn't this, this like, allure on Musa? Like, I've only seen him play a handful of times, and every time we talk about him, it's almost like he's our Michael Jordan. Yeah. Right? I remember like uh, probably like 10, 15 years ago when anime first started, uh, I was actually at one of the games <clears throat> and I saw him do off the baseline a 360 windmill. And I like ran up to my brother and I'm like, who is that guy? And then obviously now years later, I get to finally see him play again. For me, it's, you know, just, cir just circling back. Um, just an amazing Muslim player. And and fantastic Muslim player. I love that he represents us. I love that. And not only that, outside of the court, he's an amazing person. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing person off the court, too. But the one thing that Musa gets is that he's a sniper. I watched Musa shoot. Musa has, Musa has an automatic hitch in his shot. I asked him, I was like, bro, how are you shooting that consistently with a hitch? He's like, I don't know. I just always had the hitch. And I was like, how strong you have to be to dribble, create, shoot with a hitch. Now, Musa, though, I'm going to talk about one gripe that Musa has that everybody says. Musa, Musa sees red, and when he sees red, there ain't no teammates around. <laughs> there ain't no teammates around. So, Musa, how much ball hogging are we doing this season? Does it cost you games or does it win you games? Now, I will say, this is a shout out to my guy that's on my team. I heard Musa won the championship just recently against Romello Bates, Josh Fillmore. I don't exactly know the teams, but I did hear about how he was doing what he needed to do to win a game. So Musa, way to win it just before the league comes in and set a precedence. And if I know Musa correctly, Musa was trying to win it just to send a statement. Jeez. Hell, we beat the first two teams. First two picks were on the same team and number three pick one? Mm -hmm. Dang, oh, I've already that. heard how Musa felt like he was disrespected for even going number three. Ooh, all right, all right. I'm excited to see Musa. And uh, speaking of players that might have slid, number four, Sultan's Roderick Lawrence. Rod, anything I say bad, remember this is the NMAA host hat, not my coach's hat. <laughs> All right, because the one thing that everyone says when you read the report on Rod is shut your mouth and don't say anything to him. Right. So I'm not going to say anything on the court, bro. <laughs> I like to say stuff on the court. I'm going to say absolutely nothing on the court. But right now he plays in next chapter and I don't know exactly, uh, but I got to see a statistic. Sadiq, am I right? Did he win next chapter last season? One MVP. Yep. He won MVP. He shot 45% from the field in a one-on-one -on -one tournament, right? Like a tournament or a, like a... It's a one-on-one in 3v3. Okay, so one-on-one, -on -one, he shot 45%. And then he shot 57% from the three throughout the whole thing. So yeah, you're telling me that he goes further away from the basket and he shoots 14% better? That's crazy. That's absolutely insane. And it's not like he's passing it to a lot of people. In the one-on-one, -on -one, he's passing it to nobody. He's taking all the shots himself. I think City told me a statistic in one of the game. Was he 13 for 14? Yep. Insane. Bro, bro, that's a monster. That's a monster. Now, with all that said, though, Rod, 
Can you consistently wake up and show up on time on Sunday mornings? Because Sunday mornings is a different type of game than a Sunday afternoon. And can you do what you do best when you first wake up in the morning? I don't know. I'm not saying. I don't know if you are a Netflix and chill guy. I don't know if you are a go out and hang out the club guy. I don't know what kind of guy Rod is. But we're going to find out uh, whether or not on Sunday morning. I for you, he's a hooper. Yeah. And he's going to be given buckets 10 a.m., 11 a.m. It don't matter. No. The only thing I'm scared about is when I call Rod for the first time ever, I was like, hey, Rod. I said, can I speak to Rod, please? And Rod says, who's asking? And I was like, Rod, chill, bro. Like, I, no, nobody's asking. You're good, man. Just the guy that's running the league. <laughs> and then he goes, yo, you just got to be careful sometimes. I was like, sure. We just got to be careful. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's funny. That's a good story. Uh, but true hooper, another true hooper, number five, two showtime, David Butler. I think I know what you're going to say for this one, though. David Butler, to me, is our Wemby. In my honest opinion, David is our Wemby. Now, David, as freakish as David Butler is, I believe David Butler continues to play with us, not because we're just good guys, but David wins everywhere. He wins in a lot of places. He has not won with us yet. And I'm afraid that if he wins, we may never see David again. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm hoping this ain't the season for David to win. This mm. is my Batman segment, and David, I've had David on my team. David is a Batman. He is a Batman. David, there's a game where he had 20 and 20, and he texted me, my bad, man. I didn't play good. 20 and 20 and six blocks and texted me and said, I should have played better, man. My bad. I was like, (laughs) I could not understand what he was saying at that point. But David, I don't know what you got to do to yell at the guards. I don't know what you got to do to close out in the playoffs. But David, you're missing that playoffs for me, David. I don't know if he's going to win the title. David, I need to keep you around. So if it means that you got to keep losing, that's what I'm hoping for. (laughs) No, that might, that may be a downside, but to, to all the other coaches, for Dave to think about it in a different way, him and Chris Malcolm were the only two bigs ever taken in the first four rounds. The next big was taken in round five. If that tells you anything, it just means every other coach decided if you don't have David or Chris, it's not worth it. You can you, you find value. Yeah, I didn't even think about it that way, but that that <laughs> is true. Unfortunately, the bigs took a hit this season. <laughs> that is true. That's one hundred percent true. It's because it's more of them. But that's the top five. We'll be back with six through nine. You're listening to the NMAA podcast. Hit subscribe and don't, don't miss, miss the, the next, next episode. episode. And at number six to the Revengers, Dimitri, a.k.a. Meech Thompson, rookie this season. Dad, what do you got? Meech is going to put it on a guy, a bunch of guys' heads. You guys, everybody, like, I mean, I don't know if anyone's seen the guy's highlights. If yeah. you watch him. When he played Division One NCAA, some, one of the coaches asked me, how good is Meech? I said, you know what I want you to do? I want you to go look up his highlights, and I want you to see who he plays against. And I was like, you'll see North Carolina. You'll see, you'll see, all, you'll see Duke. You'll see all these teams that he plays against. And what does he do? Puts it on their heads. So I've literally watched a few highlights from Meech. Aside from the fact that he's, a, he's also a sniper, too. He can shoot the ball. I've seen Meech walk in in flip-flops and windmill. How's the man wearing slides? He has no push-off on the heel. The slides drop. (laughs) And he can windmill? What is he going to do when he puts on a pair of sneakers? (laughs) Against these guys. I don't... Look, I'm sorry. If you are a big and you are in that paint, my honest and humble opinion, you're going to be a highlight. And with the, increased media, 
production, you might just want to get out the way because we might capture it. Get it out. Get it out the way. I don't know if anyone remembers this. This is very unfortunate, and I'm not going to call it out. But Zach Pope had a moment where he got whatever crossover that he did against a particular person. I'm not going to call out the person. And that became a highlight for NMA for quite some time. <laughs> so <laughs> that was when Zach was on my team looking for him to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> if people better realize Meech went late, Meech went late. He is a full two way player, but the any time I've ever seen Meech has been on star studded teams. So he always gets to play his role. This time around, Meech has to be a Batman. And I'm not saying he can't be a Batman. I'm just saying I just don't know how much of a Batman he is. But for sure, he's going to fly. That part of it, undoubtedly. He's going to be up in the air trying to put his whole arm in the rim with your head attached to it. Yeah, see, we play them um, We play them on Sunday. And I'm not sure Warris, if Hani's going to be there. Don't go in there, Warris. I'm <laughs> the telling you, is, bro. I might just, have to. If, if, I'm not sure yeah, if Hani's coming, man. Just get out the way. Just, just get me, out the way. <laughs> and the little bit that I understand is that Meech loves to put you on anybody on a poster. Not you, but if he sees you there, he going up. He Warris, going up. If you thought Romello's video of him hitting the three hurt, keep, imagine Meech oh, yeah, putting yeah, yeah. it on replay of the dunk. It's worse. Yeah. I'm and, and, and you could see put back dunks from Meech. Meech comes out of nowhere, comes yeah. out of nowhere, and just yams it. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely seen those highlights. But uh, number seven, speaking of my team, MIB selected Ryan Atkins after Ryan took a season off. He is back, led the league in scoring. I think he's, I think he had the highest points per game ever in history, didn't he? I think he had like thirty-seven a game. Who scores thirty-seven points a game? A game. Dude's a psycho. <laughs> what are you talking now, about? Ryan, though. Love Ryan. Love him. I absolutely love him. And I will say, I think he is a bucket. His mid-range game down to... People also discredit how good of a rebounder he is. He, oh, he is had 13 a very, rebounds a game very, that season, too. He had yes, 37 to 13. A very good rebounder. But, like I said, I think he got a dog in him if he starts playing defense. The dog offensively, we know it's there. That's unquestionable that he's going to get up his points. But is he going to be the Batman that's going to care enough to take it from the rest of them? And that's what I'm yet to see because, to me, Ryan is missing that one thing where whether or not he cares enough to go stop the other guy. It's great that you score 37, but if the, there's every guy on this Batman list is going to can score 30. <laughs> Loki. So at some point, yeah. if you don't play elite level defense, you're going to get picked apart. So I, I think by all means, Warris, Warris to me is like Dan Tony. It's like, <laughs> let me get up 150 points and we're going to win on scoring. So with wh who's your Robin right now? Well, it could be match. On any given day, it could be Rob. It could be Ryan or Klee. So for sure, you got like, I mean, that might be 70 points right that's there. That's 70 points right there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> But, okay, next player, we got Chris Malcolm going to the 99ers. 99ers, after making a few trades, picked at eight and picked almost a franchise player at this point, Chris Malcolm. Now, you guys tell me if you think I'm wrong at this. I thought Chris Malcolm had a breakout season last season. Yeah. I'm talking about I've never seen him spin, move, and dunk as many times as he did. And he started shooting the three. Yeah. The yeah. shooting three was impressive. Like, it's like, oh, man, Chris is playing amazing. Now, here's the other thing, too. I don't think anybody says this enough. He don't let you score on the other side. It is hard to score on him on the other side. You might as well just, just shoot. Just shoot, because if you try to float it, he's going to block it. If you try to do anything, he's probably blocking it. Now, with Chris, though, the only thing I would say with Chris is Chris is going to need a guard who's going to have to understand how he plays to facilitate him because Zach Pope did a great job last season. Killed for him. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. We got to see what Chris Malcolm does because he got a guard who gave him the ball. And that's also where I also sometimes think that bigs are crutches because like David, in my opinion, should have won a title already. But 
If the guards are going to be stingy, how good can you be? Shaq didn't do nothing until Kobe came around and actually they worked out properly. Yep. So I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. With bigs, I always think about how good is the guard that's going to work with them. That's true. That's true. We'll see with Chris. And the last pick, technically, of the first round. I know Comedy Shorts had a back to back, but they picked D'Angelo Lee. With the last now, I know that D'Angelo feels disrespected for going here when he just went to the title. He let's let's give him his credit, man. He did something ridiculous and remarkable with Showtime. Yeah, like yeah. in the huddle, I heard him being a leader, talking, carrying them, everything. Now, I don't think he was disrespected necessarily. He could have probably gone higher than what he was, but specifically D'Angelo, he gets disrespected every season by going in the second round. Every season. So I'm going to call that out right now. I think it's absolutely ridiculous to have D'Angelo Lee go in the second round. The man is up there in rebounds, locked up on defense, is a lefty, will hit an open shot. Not only that, I've never seen David block him. David blocks everybody. Yeah. He has, I haven't seen him block D'Angelo yet. Now David might be like, now I'm going to try to go block D'Angelo. <laughs> but, but, my commercial, I saw he might get dunked on too. Do oh my god! Like oh, the commercial that we just saw, of course, of D'Angelo flying, and D'Angelo looks like Russell Westbrook, swole as can be right now, yeah. like shoulders as big as possible. Uh, but specifically, D'Angelo, D'Angelo has this one chip on his shoulder where he's been in NMAA probably the longest than everybody else, and yeah. he hasn't won a title. Nope. You know, if he showed up for my game instead of going on vacation, he might have. <laughs> See, there we go, right? Attendance is a factor. But when I mean I, I, I love D'Angelo. D'Angelo, to me, has one of the biggest hearts. Like, as far as, like, grit, dude, the guy's slightly taller than me. And, oh, my God, like, what you can do for your size. I, I just saw him recently jump up for a rebound. His half of his arm is past the rim. Yeah. Dev, I mean, it doesn't, listen, it doesn't even make sense to me. Like, I'm imagining you dunking the ball the way D'Angelo dunks the ball, and it doesn't even click in my, like, it doesn't See? register. Impossible. Impossible. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And D'Angelo, this is what D'Angelo does. Now, here's the thing, though. With these 10 Batmans, I got a question for you guys. Do any of these Batmans get taken by their robins Ooh, now that's a good question the thing is right i would say personally is some teams have two batmans i think i have two batmans right i would agree i do think you have and two batmans you can any you can interchange them that's what i'm saying it, and i think so it, both players are unselfish enough to realize when the other team or the other guy is going now, that doesn't mean they're not going to shoot themselves. But when the other guy is going, all right, let's get it to this guy. So when it oh, comes and I'm going to call it out. Josh and Sharif, y'all got to play some defense. Not passing lane defense. If one of y'all play some defense and can lock up, that person's the Batman that day. There you go. Who's Musa? Musa and... it's pro Okay, this might yeah. be kind of crazy for me to say. Clarence. But it, it's Musa and Clarence. It's Musa and Clarence Tillman. And Clarence to me is like my, like in my head, I only think of Kawhi Leonard when I think of Clarence for some reason. And I'm like, I don't, Moose is a Batman, that's for sure. But does Clarence show up? Because the stuff I've been hearing is that he, his, he fills up a stat sheet. Yeah, he does. I, I don't think, I, when I saw Clarence, my first thought was, this man doesn't do anything like wrong. Bro. You know what I mean? He doesn't I have a weakness. I saw his really. Claremont Croc stuff, and I think he has the record, or he has the most amount of triple doubles for a season so far. And the season got done. There you go. <laughs> and, and listen, man, it's going to be a fun season. Speaking of which, we'll get right into the rosters and get real dive deep into it. But And we'll kick it off with Razos too, man. Hold on. Let's come right back. NMAA Podcast.
Your favorite podcast is here. Okay, we are here with the full rosters. Now, we're not doing draft grades, like I said, but we're going to be just, you know, briefly talking about each team. And I'll ask, and, and we'll ask, uh, what is their ceiling? What is their floor? All right, how about that? In terms of record. Uh, and we'll kick it off with Razo, since we were kind of going back and forth with Razo's there. Coach Ahmed Gendi, Musa Abdul Alim in the first round, like we spoke. Darius Donaldson, Clarence Tillman, Chris Ross, Elliot, Derek Dangerfield, and Jamal Lammy. Dev, you were talking about this team a little bit. What do you think their ceiling is, truly? On paper, it's because of the fact that Gendy has to do his thing this season. And then what I mean has to his... Sorry, Gendy. It was a really bad season, bro. Um, sorry, right? But it's you're a new coach. Shake the new coach off. And now the ceiling? Honest to God, he got Musa. He got Musa and... Musa can win a game by himself. Like, if he really does it. Like, if he really pushes it. But he has a lot of guys on his team that can help him. So if Musa can figure out how to work with those guys, Elliot is able to facilitate the ball, and guys are able to play their role, and Clarence is the Kawhi I'm thinking of in my head, I think they're scary. Ceiling, I think they're in the top five. Top but five. I do think that they're three to five. Three to five, no, closer to three to five. All right. So nine. So everybody in nine teams, eight games. What are you thinking? Five and three ceiling, six and two ceiling. You know I what I think know. is so interesting about this season is it's hard for me to tell the records, right? Because yeah. there's so many yeah. Batmans, right? Like Devil saying, uh, let's just say there's nine teams. Let's just say nine superstars, right? Let's just go with that for for all purposes. There's games where like Musa might, for example, beat Romelo's team. Let's, I'm just hypothetically. Then he could potentially lose to D'Angelo's team, right? Just every team is so loaded that all it takes is for that one superstar to go out and have 40. You, it's yeah. hard to predict a win-loss for me this season on, on the teams. That's why I said three to five because I think they take longer to gel mm. as a unit. Most of them don't know each other. I also see the type of team that they have is more of a run and gun score like like a team that I would build right and and they don't have a conventional big man you know what i mean no uh, but they do have defense as far they as have defense. Darius is quite a bit an anchor on defense um Musa is not a slouch on defense neither is Clarence neither is Chris Ross neither uh, i mean i don't know about Elliot but Derek is a decent defender Jamal is a good defender off the bench too yep. so it's not like they don't have defense but they don't have size I think they're lacking in two parts. I think they're missing conventional big, like you mentioned, and conventional point guard. Uh, Musa yep. or Clarence, one of them will actually have to bring up the ball. And does that take away from your offensive flow? Or are you just, hey, Musa, when you bring up the ball, just shoot it? Uh, <clears throat> you're going to have to dictate what type of offense you want. Yeah, Musa is going to boogie for a little bit before he shoots it. He's yeah. going to try to disrespectfully set you <laughs> yeah. up and then shoot it. And then step yeah. back, bing. Yeah, yeah. Correct, but then what type of offensive flow do you want, right? I think every other team, for the most part, has some type of conventional point guard in a manner. Um, they might realistic be realistic with that part of the, the flow, bro. Like, Musa goes into the ace league and still drops 40 with pros next to him. Yeah. And then, That's like, I've literally been told, like, yo, sometimes you just got to watch the man play. <laughs> I mean that's a crazy comment. <laughs> but but yeah, no, I see I mean I agree with you, Dev. The ceiling, I agree with you. Yes. But because of that non size factor, I just feel like the floor could be a little lower than maybe uh expected. Now okay. if a team really decides to kill him inside, let's say Musa doesn't really feel like playing defense, Dave's the only true, true defender. You have Chris Ross playing center. You know what I mean? Like, David's going to give Chris Ross 75 points. You know what I mean? Like, if Juarez is trying to work out collusion trade with you right now, do not trade, Yendi. <laughs> Until after Sunday. Listen to what no. I'm saying to you. Do not trade. Juarez hey. said, I have three bigs, and one of them is coming to you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> All right, listen. All right, we're going to move on from Razos. Next team, John. Now, Dev, obviously, you're going to be a little biased. But yeah, sorry. I think... John and 
Now let me announce the team first. Romelo, 101, the first pick. John Fuentes in the second round. This is like, this is the, like, if my nightmare came true, like, John has, like, Romelo, John, two of my guys, and then the guy that gave me 35 in the final, Michael Scorso. And then, and then you got Marcus talking crap. I just imagined myself sleeping, like twitching in my sleep, trying to get away from this Jun team. Uh, but Isaac Lang, Justin Hendricks, new player, uh, Allende Blackman. I honestly like this team too, Sid. Um, uh, obviously a ceiling. I can see, I can see Jun being the one or two seed. You know what I mean? Uh, when you have, I don't even have me being there, to be honest. In top three. Yeah. I mean, top three, I would, I would, I would say I think probably. You're ceiling. I think but when I, I, got, I, got my, I, do, I do have myself two to four. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, a little bit of that depth, like defense you lack, and a little bit of the conventional. Allende has to do a lot for you, right? And but only against certain teams. But I would say a lot of teams have bigs now, Dev. You know what I mean? A lot of teams yeah, have inside the scoring. The bigs actually have to get the ball. Yeah. For them I, to I don't even think it's the like, bigs. Against it's David, big. yes. I don't, I don't think it's a big portion either, right? It, in my head, when I look at this roster, if you put Romelo on an island somewhere on the opposite side of the court and just attack the paint, all that's all you have to do. Who's stopping him? Who's stopping you? I mean, you, you're going to put a lot on Fuentes to kind of rotate there. But, I mean, once any guard gets to the paint, you're talking about Ryan, right? Let's say Ryan goes and attacks the paint or D'Angelo does or Josh does. Who's stopping him at the rim? Yeah, and that's and obviously every team's not going to be perfect, and I would say that would be your only real weakness, so to speak. Now I only put myself higher just because I think we gel the fastest. Yes, I'm not saying that your team. I like I said, top three. I actually think your floor is five. I don't even think your floor is not championship or no. And yeah, I I agree. Five. I think I'm just saying that's where I see your weakness. Something oh, no, would have to go catastrophically wrong for you That's to That's why if a Yinde like, is listening six. to me, a Yinde, stay on your feet and jump when needed. I'm going to be like, D Wade in the paint. I'm going to be like, I already told you right for Sunday is Pump Fake City. Pump Fake City. Show the ball. I don't even care. Show it. <laughs> no, no, but uh, realistically, <laughs> I do think, man, listen, Isaac Lang, bro, I want to give a shout out to Isaac. I feel like last season, he really did everybody. have a breakout. He yes. broke out last season and had a great season and went in the same round he went before. So I'm like, uh, and I understand we got more depth. That it's a little bit more talented. But I feel like that's a steal, getting him that late. Yep. And obviously, Marcus, we've seen Marcus hit seven threes in a game, six threes in a game. He could take a game away from the other team. So I think you have a lot of good complementary pieces. I think what you said, in terms of gelling together immediately, I think Mello, John, and Mike, your big three, complement each other so perfectly. Yeah. Um, and then Justin, I think, is obviously very underrated, and he's a great defender, smart basketball player. Can't ask for more. So that's really what we, the weakness we talked about is the inside defense. That's the only thing I would say. Yeah. But I do like your team a lot. I do like your team a lot. <laughs> Next team, we got the Kami Sars with Coach Amir Zufari. Now, this team, obviously, when you pick last in the draft, you got to do stuff. You got to make different. Now, last season, for example. I thought he did great, though. Overall. I thought he did great. And last season, for example, Showtime was the last pick. And Ramsey came on here famously and just gave them an F on their draft and said, well, I don't know what you were doing. You know what I mean? And, 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 and guess what? They had to take those risks, and they ended up in the finals. And if Hani was there, who knows? You know what I mean? Obviously, he wasn't. They also ended up beat Ramsey's there. team to get there. Also beat Ramsey's team to get there. So the last there you time go. Joe went this late or like third or fourth, I think he won the title. Yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't have the same pressure. No, and oh, he's obviously God. one of the best players, but... The full team, Yusuf L. Swice, Tim Mitchell is back after a couple seasons off. D'Angelo Lee, who we've been speaking about. Austin Pack was like 
the most glue guy. He's he, I should call him Gorilla Glue because he's really just like the best glue guy in the he, league. A, a pretty good Swiss Army knife. Yeah, Darius Venegas, Joe Wynn, and Adam Dorsey. Now, the reason I said the last pick has to do make some risks, right? I look at this team, and this team to me is very talented. But the pieces might take a little while to understand where they fit. You There's know? a lot of emotion coming that way. There's a lot of emotion. With D'Angelo, with Tim, with Yusuf, with, even with Darius. I think Joe and Austin are the, really the only two even keel guys that are just going to not overreact. And even I Austin, think the I two think biggest get a technical foul when he was on my team. Can you now? I'm, I'm going to say this out loud, really, because I know Yusuf is listening at some point with this. Yusuf, this has been like your fifth or sixth season, and you say the same thing very consistently. You play the hate card, right? The hate card is you think there's 50 better guys than me. Okay, now here's the thing in the marketplace, you do not get to determine where you go. It goes strictly based on where everybody thinks you fall. And I'll be honest. I'll be the first one to say, and you guys can back me or not back me. It's not on talent. It's on the fact that you're too goddamn uncontrollable. (laughs) Settle yourself down and learn how to control yourself. I don't know if you got to do some Zen Chi stuff. I don't know. You know, you you tell me about your prayer, bro. Read two record at halftime. Do something. And I'm yeah. telling you, you will easily go in the third round. But you got to control yourself. And even if you're trying to go elite or go play pro, no coach is dealing with that. I talk to scouts. I talk to trainers. I talk to coaches. They're not dealing with that. They will pull you out the game and send you home. Yep. It doesn't matter how talented you are. You're a dime a dozen. No offense. You're an Arab kid. Who is six one six two without a big build compared to the rest of the demographic that is trying to go elite? I'm not saying you're not great, but do I think that you're better than fifty of the players drafted before you? Yeah, talent wise, but you got to control yourself. And if Yusuf fixes himself, I guarantee you, Joe. Honestly, Commissars is probably going to sky a little bit. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and I think that's that's one of the X factors. I think him and Tim. But I think D'Angelo... Oh, Tim is going, a big X factor. If Tim going, can decide to stop shooting threes and go in the paint, it would make his, everybody's life different Tom, on that team. D'Angelo, I think, is the motor of this team. When the guys see D'Angelo and Austin going, diving on the floor, taking charges, going crazy like that, it's going to motivate guys to be like, oh, man, I can't just sit around. You know what I mean? So uh, we'll see. It's I think this is a team that might take a little time. To well, match- see, that's the hope, Juarez, right? But I've been to school with a lot of people who like, hey, you know, let me know what the answers on the test are. And then, you know, we'll go from there. Yeah. So sometimes you can see everybody do as much as you want to do. Doesn't mean you want to join the party. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, but next year, we have the 99ers, a.k.a. Mr. Whelan and Dealing coach Ramsey Chaban, uh, ended up with a crazy deep team. Uh, they have Alex Ford, Chris Malcolm, Terrell Christian, Mike Nichols, Norris Anderson, Aaron Bird Mitchell, and Kamos Mena. Now, this team, I look at it crazy deep on paper. But the one yeah, I thing. I really don't know how to figure that team out. I really like. I don't know how you, to figure you, them out. Either. And I'll tell you why. Because, like, when I look at it, I'm like, I don't know how to work I'll this tell, team and out. I'll tell you what it is, Dev, because I, I had the same thought. It's we don't really know what Terrell Christian is. Is he a he's first rounder? He's a beast. He's or a is beast. he a third, fourth rounder? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think he's first oh, I, or now, second. Everything easily. I've heard is first or second, right? But I want to see. I want to see what that looks like. So My I don't think is, I believe he's more ball forward, power forward. If you play two K, he had ninety four feet on Hall of Fame. Okay, there you go. So he's a lockdown defender. That's everything I've heard. Lockdown defender, lockdown defender. Great yeah, rebound, no. lockdown and defender. Like, do you him. guys remember John Blair? Yeah. The best way to explain to him is a John Blair, even maybe even better because of his post play. And then here's the only thing with him is Norris is a score first guard, in my opinion. Alex, mm-hmm. I don't I think Alex is a score first guard too. Um, so is Mike Nichols. Who, who gets him the ball? So is Bird. 
So all these guys on the perimeter are not true point guards. I like Norris. I want Norris to be my starting point guard nine out of ten times. But when you have two dominant bigs with Chris Malcolm and Terrell Christian being your first two picks, don't you want your first two picks to be the most effective? You know what I mean? So that's my question, too. What do they do? What do they look like on offense? I so, don't know what route he was going when he also got Hani, too. But, you know, that well, worked out in a, in a different scenario. Yeah, that worked out in a different scenario. Uh, next team, we have Showtime with Coach Zach and Zahid. David Butler at the number five spot, like we talked about. Musa's brother, Muhammad, Muhammad Abdul Aleem. Saw, that was a nice save right there. You got you to admit, that's professional. <laughs> uh, De'Aaron Lee in the third round. Uh, Akbar, Yassin, Aaron Person, Wasim Safadi, and Tim McGuire. Another team I look at. They're stacked. Stacked. <laughs> right? Stacked. This might be the latest De'Aaron's ever went, right? Yeah, it has to be. There's no, I mean, maybe his rookie season where he was like a child. I remember he was really young. Dev picked him like in the third round. Um, but and I think he was still wearing pajamas back then. Yeah, he still was wearing pajamas. It's the pajama. <laughs> and you know what's crazy is I feel like he started that because I started seeing that everywhere. It's like <laughs> dudes are hooping in pajamas now. And Deer was the first person I saw. I mean, like, it is Sunday morning. Pants. That man, he probably's like, yo, I just got to get to the game. Yeah, yeah, I know, but. A team I look at, how do they mesh? David, when I think of dominant bigs, right? When you think of even in the NBA, you think of dominant bigs. You think of Shaq. You think of nowadays Embiid, Jokic, right? David Butler is in our in, in our you know category. He's in that category. 100%. I think around a dominant big, you have to put certain pieces that you might not with a dominant guard or a dominant wing. And are those pieces there? I feel like Muhammad is, can knock down shots. Not a sniper. Deere struggles with his jumper sometimes. Akbar is a great shooter. AP, is when he's hot, cooks. No also offense, has Akbar. Streak. No offense, Akbar ain't getting the ball that much, in my opinion. The- I love you, Akbar, and I think you should get the ball. I do. I'm not saying that because I don't think you should get the ball. I'm just saying, Muhammad, your gripe is, and I didn't call it out because you weren't on that top 10. Should you be on the top 10? Probably. But every time that I've ever seen you lose is hero mode. You don't have to do hero mode. You got players. Yeah. You got players. Now, if he uses them right, because he's older now today, right? Like, walking triple, do- triple double if he uses them right. 100%. Easily. Easily. You- and Aaron, Aaron, can you show up on time, Aaron? Show up on time for me, Aaron. <laughs> what do you think they're starting? Like, with the amount of depth that they have, what do you think their starting lineup is? <clears throat> I see Wasim, Tim, and then Zach coming off the bench. Or Zahid coming off the bench. So David, Muhammad, Dier, Akbar, like and AP. Right? Does that make Zahid sense? Zahid is not playing. Well, yeah, he's not playing. But no, Get out of here. That's not happening. <laughs> well, and if Zahid, technically, he's off the bench. Zahid I know he does like... come in and play. So you said who's, who's off the bench? Wasim and... Wasim and Tim. Off the bench? But then they have no point. I guess they may not care about the point guard. Well, that's the thing. Has Tim, to McGuire, play Tim, Mc, Tim McGuire is a full point guard, though. Yeah, that's, that's, his, that's what he plays. And I think he'll be effective coming off the bench. And I think... Like, if you allow him to play the role, I think he can probably take that role. Now, Wasim, though, I don't think people... Like, Wasim just went to the title, too. Wasim is not a... Sl- Any turnover Wasim has, he goes he back and he game. pesters the crap out he of you. He affects the game so much. It's something that doesn't come up on the stat sheet. And yeah. that's why he's not allowed in semi pro because we he's know a, he's a midfield soccer player on the basketball court, bro. And he's yeah, work rate. He doesn't stop moving. <laughs> it, it's like I, I've I've never seen and and Dev, we know this. We've been playing with the guy for fifteen years. I can't believe he hasn't gotten tired. He's still oh, the same. I, I, like, I he's don't still, I don't understand it. So uh, back in the well, now I will say a hundred percent. Wasim, you need to get married. And you need to have a kid so you can slow down. <laughs> slow down. No, I was saying back in the MIB Surat days, like that's throwback. We used to call him the Energizer Bunny. And yeah, before we had, I remember one time, one time, we said our game plan is we're going to tire with Seam out. We're just going to hit him with screens. We're going to make him run around. But he never got tired. And I was like, all right, so we're not doing that again. 
uh, when <laughs> we, we play we'll pickup on Thursday and Wasim comes, guaranteed Amir is going to throw the ball at him at least once. Yeah. Guaranteed. It happens. It happens. <laughs> but, Sid, what do you see for this, the ceiling for this team? Uh, I do think this is a team, as long as, that, as long as they gel, could you know, go back to the finals. If they don't gel, I can see some difficulty, right? Like, like you mentioned, um, they are lacking in the shooting department a little bit. Not, not, I don't think a ton. I think Muhammad can shoot relatively okay. Uh, David, you know, he can shoot as well. I mean, they're not knocked was down. threes last season yeah. too. I wouldn't say they're snipers, right? But they, they can hit. Um, and as long as they, they have the defense and they have enough offense, both in the half court and on fast break to get there. I, I can see there's, you know, on the lower end, I don't think they go that low. I think maybe six seed. I don't have this them. A, this okay. is a team but give Zach and Zach hit some credit. They have taken some teams that make absolutely of no course. sense. Yes. And somehow they work it out. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. And I think the guy, and obviously their draft strategy was to get value at every pick, which they did get. Boy, right? did they. I, they, I think they had the best pick in, in a round, like four or five times where they had like the best pick in that round. Yeah. But the team now has to get put together in a way that makes sense to ac- accent these stars and these Batmans that we're talking about. We need David to be able to score 30. If David's not getting the ball, or if David doesn't have any space, there's no point in picking David at five. And in you my opinion, I mean? we're going to see the maturity of Muhammad this season. How, yeah. how, how, is he Muhammad from what we know, or is he Hoop Finesse? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But let's go back, to, uh, and we'll be back with the rest of the teams after this. to the NMAA podcast. Make sure to leave a review. This makes our day and fuels future episodes. Next team, we have the Revengers. Didn't have the best season last season. And everybody made sure Ozzy knew about that. Uh, Coach, obviously, Omer Zahid, Emma Shah, co-coach, stepped in. Um... And they picked Dimitri Thompson in the first round. BJ Battle, Tim Nightingale, Richard Branch, Areeb Ahmad, Phil Wells, and Kevin Cruz. Two new guys. Uh, this team, to me, is so not Ozzy. So when 100%. he said, I'm going to go he didn't somewhere pick 90s different, basketball. This is, this is so different than what Ozzy's like. Usually, like, I want my point guard, I want a shooting guard, I want a small four, I want a power four, I want a center. This time, positionless basketball. Yeah. Who is the point guard? I don't even know. Meech, BJ, Phil, Kevin. Oh, Rich. He has to go with Rich. Rich and, and, and Rich. And is Rich starting? Or is Rich coming off the bench? Is one of the new guys coming? That's even more interesting, right? So Now, how he has it, he has BJ and Meech who can go for triple doubles. Both of them. Both. So when I see, like, maybe the cohesiveness is not there. But the talent is so off the charts. I like the new guys, Phil Wells and Kevin Cruz, a lot. Phil I Wells think, is a bucket. Is I a think bucket. he's so good, and I was so shocked that Ozzy went both of them because I had I had a couple guys penciled in. To I'm like, this is auto Ozzy picks. You know what I mean? Same here. And in my when when Ozzy said Phil Wells, I was like, that was weird. Okay. Next pick goes to Ozzy again. He goes, Kevin Cruz. I'm like, what is – I'm like, well, Ozzy picked two new guys? I'm like, someone's what helping is- Ozzy. <laughs> so, so Kevin Cruz – Kevin Cruz can play. Kevin Cruz yeah. can really play. Like, I think he's going to be a good breakout star this season. I think Phil Wells is going to shock a lot of people. Um, but the other problem becomes he can't share the ball that much. And that's the weakness, I would say. But if they figure out how to move the ball between, in my opinion, the four gunners in Meech, BJ, Phil, and Kevin, if they can somehow find a healthy balance. And, and, and listen, I've had a team with Fuentes, Nacho, Josh Fillmore, Marcus Camacho. I know what it's like to have four guys that could go. And you got to share that ball. You got to trust each other. And we figured it out. And then Nacho went to Puerto Rico. But 
you it's possible. So I I think the ceiling for this team is very very high. Um, Ozzy's a great coach. I, and like, I, and I, mean, I as think Ozzy can put it I like to talk about him. He's a great coach. And Ozzy is a great coach. I will say that 100% I agree. But he has not coached a team like this in NMA. He's not, not coached a bunch a team of offensive everyone, juggernauts. <laughs> yeah. Usually everyone has a role and the p- players he picks fit into the role pretty perfectly. And then he's yes. like, all right, this is my system. That system ain't going to work with this team. All right. Who's the four? You're going to play, play BJ at the four? He's going to be like, give me the ball. Shut up. You know what I mean? So, and he should because he's amazing. But I'm, I'm very curious what that team's going to look like. Ceiling, obviously, very, very high. Uh, next team, we got my team, MIB. Uh, Ryan Atkins, Klee, Jai, Hani, Chris Emil, Kevin Solstra, and Andre Lloyd. Now, obviously, I'm a little biased, so. Dev, I'll let you take the floor. What are you thinking for the ceiling for my team? Am I be here? So my thing is, I I'm looking at it, honey. As long as he does his rim protection, you got your defense there, so guys can mess up. Guys can kind of mess up there as long as he's going to protect the paint. Um, Kevin Solstray, I'm still trying to figure out. To me, he's a raw player, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong on this. Um, to me, he's that play. He's that garbage man. He's going to clean up a lot. He's going to get his putbacks. I I don't maybe I'm wrong about it. I just didn't see that shooting set up there. Chris Emil gives you the shooting. Um we all know what Chris Emil can do. And then um I'm missing a player. You said well we know Clee and Ryan. Um who's who's your third Jai. pick? Jai. There we go. Jai. Jai is your sleeper player, but no offense to you Jai. To me your game is great, but it'd be putting me to sleep sometimes. <laughs> I don't understand why it takes so long to do these moves. Like, I'd be watching it, and I'm like, man, like, he going to make it sometime. Nope, not yet. No, wait. No, no. Oh, wait. No. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, there he goes. <laughs> so if I'm the defender, he, he definitely rocking you to sleep. <laughs> For sure. But, <laughs> so, but I will say I think he is your biggest factor on that team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I like I like the defense. fact that, and I like the fact that Jai is good with the ball, but doesn't necessarily need the ball to score. No. So, same thing with Kevin, where these two guys that are gonna get about eight to ten points just off of putbacks, just off of backdoor cuts, just off of fast breaks. When I have a Ryan and Klee combination and I have another 15 to 20 points coming from just off the ball, you guys don't even need the ball. Jai, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you're expecting to get the ball, you might as well just figure out how to get it on an <laughs> offensive rebound. So if you're, if you're going into this thinking that you're going to stand at the three and they're going to pass it to you, I'm going to tell you the truth right now, bro. <laughs> you might as well go get the offensive rebound. That's how you're going to get it. And then I'll eventually it, after they see you board it, they'll give it back to you. I'll put it to you in better words. If you see Hani at the three, just crash the paint. That too. That too. <laughs> no you know Hani's right you, you know going to do a few adjacent Tatum sidesteps. No, no, gotcha. heck no. <laughs> no, heck no. Hani, he, listen. He's doing the baseline fadeaway special. <laughs> no, no, no. Hani, listen. We got scores, man. We're not doing the, we're not doing the baseline fadeaways this season, Hani. If you're open, I love it. Take it. I liked Hani. was really efficient on open threes last season. The step backs, I wasn't a huge fan of. Uh, but no. The next team we have Sultan, Sid, your team. Obviously, we've talked about Roderick in the first round. You said you mentioned Zach Pope. Uh, Alfredo Noodle Williams, aka the legend, anime legend, probably I mean, he's been around anime for so long. Dominic Johnson, new player, rookie this season, Dayton Hershkowitz, Teron Elliott, and Jerome Ricks. The fact that I, and you know what? I'm like, what player? What and what round? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't. When I look at Sid's team, I'm like, he can start every single player. He could. You have like seven different starting lineups that you can le- legit have. I think that's a testament to everybody realizing, hey, look, guys, you got to share your time. You're gonna have some moments that are gonna be better in some games, and some moments that are not. You can't just always be like, oh, I need to be on the floor. Well, if you played like crap, maybe you don't need to be on the floor that game. 
Yeah. And that goes to like everybody. Like I have these guys who are like, why didn't I get to play? Bro, you suck that game. I can't tell you anything else. Like, what do you want me to do? Because here's the problem that people have. You miss like five layups and you make one. Yo, I was killing them. No, you were not killing them. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the biggest issue that guys don't get to see on the court. Everyone thinks their role is promised to them as if they're Steph Curry. <clears throat> yes, you can't buy I Steph Curry the way he until we get field goal percentage. When I mean I am pushing this to figure out how to well, get field trying, goal man. percentage, if we get field goal percentage, it will change people and realize you need to sit down sometimes. No, that's the next evolution for sure. We really we really do need that. Field um, goal no. and turnovers. But yes, tur- like that team specifically, I think uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how they're going to play out. Yeah, I think, um, honestly, players compliment each other pretty well on on the sultans i think noodle bring bringing that leadership and bringing that high iq on every possession type of basketball really complements what everyone does on that team um, well, his two biggest x factors is well we already know zach pope and does zach now zach pope has changed his game in the last few seasons to become more versatile and in my opinion Zach, just go score like you. We know you can score. Go give him twenty out there. You yeah. know you can do, it. and he can give you an efficient twenty, a very efficient twenty. And that's why I think Zach, try Zach to stop the best that. player on the other side. And, and Zach doesn't get that. Actually, I'm glad that you brought that up. I feel like Zach doesn't get that credit of being an efficient scorer. And and we talk about yeah, he can shoot. Yeah, he'll do. He he gives you twenty on like ten shots. You yes. know, like no, no, no. He's he's an efficient scorer, and then the biggest wild card which Sadiq knows is Dom. How good is Dom? Man, he looked he looked good on that showcase, and and the fact that he was like screaming, like set the screen, go under the screen, blah blah. I was like, ooh, okay. I I'm like I like the right now play. that Zach Pope and Dom they're gonna be um they're gonna be the backstep brothers. <laughs> this, yeah, because they yeah. both shoot that with that back step. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For me, I, and and those two are pretty big X factors. I actually like. I, I love Noodle. Always have, but I want to see him show these young guys exactly the type of player he was. We all talk about him being the legend. One season, man, just l- lay it all out on the line. Just show them. Just show them who you used to be. Oh, <laughs> you know, there somewhere. You don't need Noodle to score. If Noodle no. just showed you his prime level defense, oh, you win. You win. 100%. The wingspan was crazy, bro. It didn't Noodle make sense. Noodle stole it after he let you go by him. Yeah. <laughs> On purpose. Just, just show Bates Island that it did not touch what you used to be. Oh, Oof. he was a monster on defense. Monster. Absolute yeah. monster. One through, when we say one through five, he, he, the legit one through five. Legit one through five. But last team, we have the legends, the defending champs, Coach Jay Barnett, Dane Thompson, who might as well just be franchise tagged onto legends. I don't know why we do this. Just, just let Jay have Dane every season. We know he's going to need We need to give Dane an NMA t shirt or something. I don't like the, the years in which I, that Dane has been with us. Dane, respect to you, man. Like, Dane has been with us forever. 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 I think literally forever, actually. It's like the first ever before, season. Before me. Yeah. That's how crazy that is. Before, before me, too. Me. Before <laughs> me, too. I was not I was like, oh, okay. And yeah, he was already in the league when I joined in 2009. Yeah. So there you go. Um, but also Josh Fillmore in the first round. Sharif Al-Mullah, JP Friday, Tony Ku, uh, Abid Obeda. I don't know why is it, uh, but the thing is, it's A B I D. How does that this. become Obeda? This. You know what I mean? Like I, I read it. You have that discussion with his dad. Okay, <laughs> all right, good. And then Nader solid to to round out former coach. Shout out Nader. Legends ceiling. What are we thinking, boys? Sid, I'm gonna kick it to you. <laughs> uh, ceiling. Uh, they're they're not a bad team. I, I don't think their ceiling is championship. I don't, me personally. Uh, second round is ceiling in the playoffs. Ooh, can't even get to the finals, you don't think? I don't think so. 
No att- now, attendance I'll, issues. I'll, I'll say you. why I don't think though. I think it's because of defense. I think it's yeah, because of defense. I, I think they are lacking on defense. I, I don't think it has anything to discredit the players. Sharif's a great player. Josh's a great player. I had Josh talked about how long Dane has been in the league. No offense, Dane. You might got some older legs to guard some of these younger guys. JP Friday has the biggest job every week to guard an elite. JP got to guard Rod. JP has to guard Musa. JP has to, like, JP. He has to guard his own boy in Romello. He, he has to be Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday yeah. wakes up on most. He said, dude, I wake up sometimes and I'm like, man, I got to go guard this guy today. And then I think to second that, just besides the defense, their bench, and I, I, I love all of their bench players. I love Nader, uh, Obeda, and Tony. That's hard to come in and sub and, you know, have to guard those same guys. Uh, like, you're, you're asking a lot out of pretty much all three of them play semi-pro. And yeah, they do. And come in and guard. I mean... Let's be real. Everyone's pick, ev- everyone's matchup this season is who can I pick and roll on the other team? I know if I play, they're coming for me. Now you got three of them. <laughs> yep. Let be, let I, I I announced to my team. I said if you, two weeks as soon as the draft was done, the first text they got: if you guys do not start running, I need you to start running, not playing basketball. Start running because these guys are gonna put you on an island. They're going to put mm-hmm. you on an island, and they're going to tell you very, very closely, like, hey, can you hang with us? Tony Koo, not saying in a bad way. Tony Koo, you're 40, bro. And I'm not saying in semi-pro you ain't cooking. He is cooking in semi-pro. Yes. But in a pick-and-roll matchup, Tony's going to be like, I'm going to use six fouls. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that's what. And that's it's not a bad idea do. either, though. <laughs> Honestly, it's not a bad game. For <laughs> now, don't, Tony. Trust me. If I'm in the game, I already know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm using seven. If somebody's going. <laughs> all I'm saying is, if in a pick and roll situation when I'm in the game, if my guard says switch, intentional foul. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter who is on the other team. That's it. I'm slapping your arm. All right, so we're we're not doing this, but. Literally no, scream uh, out, Jeff, Jeff, foul. Foul right now, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I, I already told Romello for our Sunday matchup, don't pick and roll me, man. I don't want to have to hurt you. You do have a baby on the way. I don't want to have to be the reason I slap you hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love nope. that. But those are all the teams and all the players on every team. Honestly, and, and I will say this and no BS, genuinely, genuinely, we were doing a power rankings and I was like, Wow, I don't. Every team is so similar. I can't, like, I can't put this team at number one and another team at number six. And the sixth team might be better than the first team. There's no clear cut best team, no clear cut top two, top three, even. So I'm very, very curious to see how this season's going to go. It's going to play out in a way that I think that we're not prepared for. So I'm interested, man. I'm excited. So we'll see. But with that, last segment coming up, the picks. And then we're going to be out. You're listening to the NMAA Podcast. With you every week. All right, boys. Picks champion for semi pro last season was unfortunately Ramsey. I was one game back and he won. But fresh start, fresh season. And Sid, we got you on this week. So I'm curious who you got in some of these games. Week one is always so random. Some, some guys go 0 and 3, some guy goes 3 and 0. You never know what's going to happen. Warriors, you can only be the one to pick our game. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, so speaking of which, why don't we just start with that game? Jund versus the Sultans. Now, Jund versus, man, you see the matchup on paper. I'm very, very interested in. I think the Sultans have a little bit more depth in terms of their scoring and in terms of their, uh, scoring outside and inside and ball handling. Uh, I think obviously Melo and John have to do a lot of the creating on Jun, 
but we know that they're both capable. Yeah, this is tough, man. Honestly, week one, I just feel like Jund is going to have a little bit more cohesiveness. So I'm going to go Jund, and I'm going to pick the score. So I'm going to say it's going to be like 83-78, and they, a, a two-point game becomes a five-point game because of free throws. Uh, and I'm going to put Jund by a hair there. What do you guys, Dan, what do you think about that? Comes down to Rod. Yeah. Comes down to Rod. To me, it, it, it's uh, is real simple on the cat. Now, let's say, for example, hypothetically speaking, Rod's not present; he's not able to make it. I still don't think I just win it like that. No, I don't think and, so. Either. And the reason I say that is because Zach Pope comes to play. He doesn't like, and he changes his game up accordingly. So, and then you have Jerome, who can go for twenty easily. And so he has options. It's not like yeah. I'm just going to be able to just steamroll through that. No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. But next game we have Kami Sars versus Razos. Two teams. I'm curious to see what their offense is going to look like. Um, Sid, I'll let you pick this game first. What are you thinking between these two? This is a tough matchup. Um. Interested to see how both teams gel. Uh, the reason I think Commissars might have more chemistry is they have Joe, D'Angelo, and Tim. And those three in particular played together. You're right? also not forgetting Dar- Darius Venegas, who they played with together. They play with together every week, actually. Yeah, there, there's a lot of chemistry on that team. Uh, maybe Amir knew or did not uh, know that, but a lot of chemistry put together on that roster. Razos, on the other hand, you have Musa, you have Clarence, you have Darius Donaldson. I think that three in particular, that's that's a lot of firepower, right? You have Darius who can do essentially what you're saying Jai can do uh, with the cleanup duty. Darius uh, can score 20 without ever touching the ball. Yeah, it doesn't make without sense. Without ever having to dribble. <laughs> never, without <laughs> dribbling a dribble. single time. And, and we'll score 20, 20 and 10 would probably be his stat line if I had to guess. Uh Eight and offensive have, rebounds. Yeah. yeah. And then I have Clarence with another 20, 10, and 6. Uh, I'm going to pick Razos on this one strictly okay. because of the Musa effect. Strictly because of that. I, I just think Musa's that good of a player that he he can push them past. I don't think it's... He can hard team. carry? That's what you're Yeah, I, I, I don't think... I think, and I think he'll need to versus his team. I think D'Angelo, Austin Pack. Uh, Tim is going to give them all that they can handle. Um, you know, that's a lot of firepower power and motor, um, but I think Musa can push them through. Okay. I'm on the other yeah. side. So that makes I sense. Got, I got, I got Commissars winning it. Yeah, I, I actually think, do I as just well. think that gelling too quickly, and I'm not saying that they can't play defense, but D'Angelo is a problem. He is an absolute problem. He's a chemistry breaker, bro. You know, it doesn't matter what chemistry you got, what passes you're making. When he comes and snatches an offensive rebound and lays it up at and one, you're like, what just? But happened? not only that, he hop steps into your chest. Oh my god, I hate it. Oh, I, I agree. Him. He's gonna need, and I hope he's been hooping because realistically, on the team he's on, they're gonna have to put him to guard Musa. So now you gotta go guard Musa, who's gonna, even if he doesn't, is gonna try to give you forty. And then you got to hope to put up 30 on the opposite end. <laughs> That's tough. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But if somebody, oh, honestly, know, if, if we, somebody if can do it. If we called D'Angelo right now, he's like, he ain't giving me 40. Yeah. No, no and, and I agree. But you see, Musa doesn't have to go guard D'Angelo. Oh, he's on the other side where he's like, huh, I'm not giving who 40? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, Musa's going to guard him. Darius is going to guard D'Angelo. There That's you go. True. Makes it easier on him for offense. But. That is true. That is true. But next game, we have Showtime versus the Legends. This was the finals matchup, I believe, from it last was. season. Um, and they're running it back with I got Showtime. Um, very different teams. Showtime. Dev says he got Showtime. Got Showtime. Quick and to the point. Sid says he got Showtime. Quick and to the point. I will say I have Showtime. Quick and to the point. I just think that David is going to wreak havoc on, uh, on the Even Lakers. if David doesn't, who's guarding Muhammad? Yeah. Who's guarding Muhammad? I'm sorry, like, just size. Size alone. Unless Jay wants to go ahead and start getting him on the perimeter. Yeah. They're going to have to really master the, the box out. 
Yeah. Because, I mean, we're only mentioning David and Muhammad. You forgot about Deere, who loves to rebound also. <laughs> I think Deere and David were both top two in rebounds two seasons ago. And they were both at now 15. Now I know how going to get the ball. This is exactly yeah. why. Deere's going to get the rebound, and he's going to pass it to Akbar. It's not even going to catch ready. it. He does get a ready. jump where he just ca- catches it, kind of, and slaps it out towards the shooter. And Akbar's going to rotate right to that corner. Boom. Akbar, be ready. That's how you're going to get the ball. That's how you're going to get the ball. There you go. Showtime. Showtime's winning that game. Last game, we have Revengers. M-I-B, my team. Obviously, I cannot pick this game. Uh, but I can tell you that I'm very excited to play the Revengers. I always like playing against Ozzy's teams. And I don't think Ozzy's beaten me since that championship game, just because I've been furious. But, uh, Sid, tell me, uh, who you got in this game? Uh, this, uh, in my opinion, um, besides my own game, uh, I think this is probably like the second game of the week. It sucks that they're both at the same time, because I really want to see this matchup. As a coach, I might just you know, have to peep both sides. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I actually think mm, Ozzy has a lot. He really does. So much. He has so much. Yeah. I'm sorry, Waris. I really do want to pick you, but I'm going to have to go Revengers on this one. Uh, okay. I, I just think he has, he has a lot. And I'm really excited. I, I've always been a huge BJ fan. Like, just... I think from his first season, I've wanted him, never gotten him, always wanted him. Like every, I think him and Tim Mitchell were the players I pretty much wanted every single season and never got. Uh, and I, I'm just excited to see him come back. I think he's going to probably put up close to a triple double. Um, and he's going to play some hard defense. I, and I'm excited to see how Ryan combats that. Uh, it's a lot more defensive intensity than his first season. That's so much fun to watch, like that level of playing ability. Yeah. Yeah, um, the, who you I'm got on the here? other side. I'm on the other side. I I think Wars has to figure out the chemistry. But the only reason I'm on the other side is because if and if Ryan messes up, Klee is a tough cover. Is a tough cover. Like I don't think anybody realizes. I got to watch Ryan and Klee go head to head with each other, and Ryan has to respect him because. Yo, Klee, Klee, Klee's buckets too. He's got buckets too. And he only takes like three steps and he's getting a bucket. Bro, he's so fast. It's insanely and, fast. And he's strong. He's strong. Yeah. Like, I also it's, picked it's Revengers. Not the, knowing, it's not the fake cut muscles. It, it's like legit. I, I picked Revengers with Wars stating early in the podcast, Hani will not be there. So Hani I think we might have, not be there. Yep. If, yep. if Hani's there, then yes, I'd pick MIB. But then you have Nietzsche and BJ kind of attacking the rim. Uh, from a defensive perspective, I don't think you'll stop them at that. That's true. Yeah. I'm going we'll to go with Warris on this one. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. That's Meech, gonna be a fun game. No too. disrespect. I think Meech is gonna come out to show though. I think I think a lot I think I don't think people are ready for what he's about to come out and show. This is the only game I really didn't want to play minutes. You know what I mean? Hani's like, oh, I might not be their brother. And I'm like, oh, great. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, the one game where we got legit dunkers, um, you're going to make me play. But uh, no, I'm I'm actually very excited for that game. I'm hoping Hani can make it um, and we can have like a full 8-8 eight to eight matchup. But those are all the games. So that's the week one. How y'all feeling? Dev, how you feeling, bro? How y- I know you must be excited. You got that I'm number ready. one pick. You didn't even win the lottery. You got the first pick. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm excited just to see it. I'm actually just missing being in the gym, to be honest. I was in this season while fasting, how ready I've been since the draft, man. Like, I have been excited. (laughs) No, for sure. For sure. But when you uh, got a guy who shoots 57%, I'd be excited too. Hey, man, I did a lot to get him. (laughs) That's true. That's true. Right now, I want to see my money's worth. Also, listen, I just want to say the three of us on here have nothing to do with the spellings of people's names. I just want I just want to put that out there. I know we got a real hot topic this week that everybody's name is spelled wrong on the website and on Instagram. Um, and we have nothing to do with that. Don't tag me. We'll fix right? it, guys, though. Send us a message. We can always update it and correct it. If we it's on the know. website, send me a message. But don't feel bad. I've been a coach, just a coach for four seasons. I am the Cole Commissioner's brother, and my name is spelled wrong. 
If it could be him, it could be anybody. Don't be offended. <laughs> uh, with that being said, actually, Dev, do you have another let's, segment? Let's close out with one thing, so because he's putting me on the spot real fast. But um, so, as Muslims, we believe, of course, in heaven and hell, and we have heaven as being Jannah, um, and of course, we all want to make it to Jannah. Now, in Jannah, when you get to Jannah, it, it, they say that. You look around, and if you haven't seen your friend or if you haven't seen a specific person, you can ask for where that person is. And let's say, for example, hopefully none of us are there, um, and this is calling out Waris and this is calling out Sadiq. If you don't see me in Jannah, then you better go get me out of hell. <laughs> All right, because the people in Jannah have the ability to ask for where this person is and then have the ability to try to get this person out of hell. So now the reason I'm saying this is that because when you guys step on that court on Sunday, don't put your guys in hell. You can be one player that changes the fold of your team. Let's all strive for that greatness. Let's all strive for that opportunity to be a part of one unit that pulls each other out of hell and into the gates of heaven. So know your company and understand your company. And I always think about that because. I try to keep good company. So in this way, that company pulls me out of that hell. If I am for any reason headed there. Yep. Well said. That's true. Hey, you got to get my back too, bro. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I think I, I'm, I'm hoping. Roderick, you win me a championship. I'm not saying you, uh, if you, <laughs> the first if, thing if, I'll <laughs> pull you out there myself. <laughs> <laughs> Man, okay. Man, I'm just like, putting Roderick on the contingency. <laughs> Jannah contingency is wild. I'm not gonna lie, but that's the first time I've ever heard that. We've been in the league for ten plus years. But with that being said, Sid, thank you for joining me, Dev. Of course, thank you for joining again. Everybody, be happy. Everybody, be healthy. We'll be back with you next week, guys. Peace out. My rock. Rock. My element. We are NMAA basketball dean brotherhood. We've got former college D1 athletes, former international players, competition at all levels. Come on, man, it's what we do best. It's game time, grab your crew, cause I got mine. Cause my five, we gon' shut her down like prime time. We always ready, staying steady on these front lines. Lights, camera, action, and we live, call it showtime. This labor of love, we call it grinding dedication. Blood, sweat, and tears for years, call it determination. Don't get a mistake with people hating on your greatness. We just patiently waiting to make a slam dunk statement. Yeah. So turn the station to NMAA podcast. Got the commission gone, going full blast. So when they ask who's the greatest in the state, well, we shaking back. Breaking and breaking angles is so waste. I'm too clean and precise with my jump shot. Celebrate with my bow and arrow, call it guns hot. Locked and loaded with my bag and my whole squad. Always rolling deep with my team, praising one God. Did you give it all you got? Did you give it 110%? Any team's capable of holding that championship trophy. Just depends how bad you want it. I'm ruthless, I'm competitive. My drive's on fire, I'm so tentative. I'm an economy executive. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a champion. Let's go. In the race of life, could it never reach the finish line? I'm a get what's mine. Gonna do the time, cause I'm in my prime. I'm, my mind is my weapon. My mental toughness is dead on. I'm a sharpshooter, top hooper. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a champion. It's not over till I say it is. Heart beating, blessed time to live It's all or nothing, I got all to get Pushing to the last second, cause it's still time to win Never too late, cause I'm the champion within And the champions are made of perseverance No quitting, no quitting, ha, yeah That's why I'm out here grinding day and night, day and night Always hungry, staying humble, that's my way of life Cause every team dreams of being the number one seed But do you got what it takes to make it in this league? Giving it all, gave my line, going 110 Claiming it all, looking to thrive, decisions always a win I'm ruthless, I'm competitive My drive's on fire, I'm so tentative I dominate, call me executive I'm a, I'm a, I'm a champion Let's go! In the race of life, quit has never reached the finish line I'm gonna get what's mine, gonna do the time Cause I'm in my prime
get it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a child.